afternoon. Uh, my name is James O'Farrell. I'm the head of additive manufacturing here at Solid Experts. Uh, today, uh, I'm really excited about uh, presenting to you the Form Labs line. Again, uh, with Solid Experts, we're always trying to collaborate uh, with companies that uh, provide technology that's of leading edge, that's exciting, and also at the same time that provide fits uh, the demand of the marketplace. And with Form Labs, for us, it was a no-brainer to. Uh, create a partnership with them to uh, sell their products because we feel that with the Form Labs uh, 3 and the 3L, these technologies are of leading edge and also at the same time are really uh, leading uh, the pack in terms of uh, SLA printer, not only in terms of price point, but also in terms of their technology, which we'll get into uh, a bit a bit later on in, in this video. But just to give you a quick history of the Form Labs uh, brand, uh, we have our creator, uh, one of the creators of, of the Form Labs is Max. He was an MIT student and he was exposed to this technology, SLA uh, technology, and he saw a need for it. However, there was not a whole lot of accessibility. And this was back in maybe 2011, 2010. There wasn't a whole lot of accessibility when it came to SLA uh, technology. So he felt maybe it was time that the industry saw something uh, to create uh, this type of printer uh, for the everyday uh, designer and, and manufacturer to have a desktop style uh, SLA printer to meet the demands of the market. So in 2012, the Form Labs uh, brand was created. And since then, we've had 70,000 printers uh, sold worldwide. And now we're really excited to, to be a part of, uh, of this partnership with uh, Form Labs. So now let's get into uh, the SLA technology. So SLA is uh, stereolithography. So what, what stereolithography is is, is a liquid resin that's cured and hardened by a laser light or a UV light, uh, essentially. What differentiates themselves is two components. The first is the reservoir tank here. It's a flexible bottom. So why is this important? Well, first off, with the prior generation of Form Labs or SLA technology, what happened is, is you would have a liquid resin that would be released into this reservoir tank and what would happen is you would have the build table come down dip into the resin and below you had the laser that would be uh, curing and, and hardening the liquid resin however when it came to the next layer how the second generation worked was is for they had a thing called peel force which was essentially as you take the part you would move it over to the side and then it would break off from the bottom, more resin would, would be released in, and then it would center back and then continue. And this was a rinse, recycle, repeat uh, method of doing things with a SLA printer, especially with the uh, second generation. Now, Form Labs has a proprietary technology called low force stereolithography. And so with this low force stereolithography, what it allows you to do is with this first component, which is the flexible uh, reservoir tank below, the flexible table actually, I should say, it, it kind of gives it a tent-like effect. So the peel force is happening in real time. So essentially what, what's going on is, is that you have your, your, your build table that's being dipped in. And so the part, the laser under is curing and hardening uh, the resin and what's happening is the part is building up in real time without having to move it no displacement and so as a result you can get much more accurate parts you can get much more of a smoother surface finish and also most importantly, if you want to push the limits in terms of R&D or research and development and really get into some really complex geometries, uh, you're, you're now able to do this with this proprietary technology called low force stereolithography, which is one of the biggest advantages uh, on the marketplace right now with uh, a Form Labs machine. Now, let's go into the actual machines themselves. Uh, right behind us here, we have 
two beautiful machines here, which are uh, very simple uh, to set up, very simple to use, very intuitive. So for people out there that are that are looking into this technology for the first time, uh, the transition is very seamless. There is not a whole lot of, you do not need to be a technician. Uh, it's made so that you don't have to be a 3D pr printer specialist per se. Anybody on the production floor in the engineering department can have access to it and use it very easily. What are some of the primary differences between the two? Well, first off, I think visibly, uh, on a visual scale, we can see that there's a significant difference in terms of the uh, build size to my right, right here. Uh, we have the Form 3, uh, so this one is our smaller unit, and then on the other side we have the Form 3L, which is five times bigger in terms of build size. So just to give you an idea in terms of uh, the build table, it's 5.7 by 5.7 by 7.3 for the Form 3. And then on, the, on my left, I have the Form 3L, which is 13.2 by 7.9 by 11.8. Uh, so these are the uh, build di dimensions. Now in terms of resolution, resolution is gonna vary from the resin. So this is one of the things that's really interesting about the Form 3L is the variety of different resins that you can have, which we're also gonna get into shortly, but they're gonna vary from 25 microns all the way up to 200 microns. So depending on the applications, depending on what you need uh, in terms of pre precision, we can go all the way to 25 microns. And so we're catering some very, uh, some certain industries that need some really intricate details. Uh, so again, with these resins, we get a lot of variety with our materials. One of the primary differences between the Form 3 and the Form 3L, aside from the side, is, is also in terms of their cartridge. So both machines will hold this as their liquid resin, which is a one liter cartridge of resin uh, that is released into the machine. However, with the Form 3L, you will have the ability to hold two cartridges uh, simultaneously at the same time. So when you run out, if you're printing a really big part uh, and you run out of resin, uh, the other one will kick in. So you have kind of a bi-directional uh, usage between uh, each cartridge of resin. So that's one of the, also one of the primary differences uh, between the, the printer. Depending on the applications of the Form 3 or the Form 3L, uh, some other more, more important facts are is First off, if you're looking to do uh, volume and you're looking to do customization and you're looking to execute at a quicker pace, the Form 3L does execute uh, slightly quicker than the Form 3. And also because of its larger build table, you will be able to either build larger parts or you can do more custom uh, volume runs with this type of with this type of printer. Now, if those are not necessarily needs that you have, you also have uh, the Form 3 that can also uh, respond in terms of, of creating just one-off parts. You can also do uh, small volume runs as well. Uh, so we do have a variety where we have uh, clients that do uh, procure multiple units to do their production run. So it depends on your needs, but these are some of the primary differences between the Form 3 and the Form 3L. And now with the, in terms of the materials, the classes of materials that we have, well, to first to start off with, we have the standard class, which is the gray, we have the black, we have the white, uh, resins, but as well we have a resin called Draft. So the Draft, what's interesting about the Draft is for anyone who's looking to do some rapid prototyping and doesn't necessarily need a, an immaculate uh, surface finish, the Draft material could be a great, um, a great re resin for fit, form, and function just to validate your parts quickly uh, as possible. So that's what the application of the draft resin. In terms of colors, we can actually take our resins and mix colors uh, to create uh, create different colors. So that's one of the questions that we've been frequently asked. Um, so yes, it is possible also to mix colors uh, with the uh, form labs. So that summarizes our class of standard materials. Now we can move into our engineering materials. So we have the tough 
2000, which right here. So if you're looking to create some really stiff, durable parts uh, with more mechanical uh, properties and functionalities actually, this resin, the Tough 2000 is for you. We have the Tough 1500. So one of the primary differences is the fact not only is it stiff, but it's, it's also pliable. So you can see here, we can uh, just press it and then it'll spring back up. So we have a combination of uh, pliability and also in terms of resistance. So this is actually really, really cool. One of my personal favorites, but uh, this is part of the our engineering collection right here. Moving forward with our engineering resins, we have the flexible ADA, which is right here, which is our stiffest, uh, softest touch uh, material or resin that we have in our library. So you can see here, this part is to kind of uh, simulate uh, rubber. And so you get a, a feel of uh, certain flexibility, but also stiffness. And so moving forward, we have this one here, which is our elastic 50A, which is, is our softest feel in terms of uh, materials. So here, uh, if you're looking in the medical uh, field, you can simulate organs and hearts and pulmonary uh, arteries as well, which is the case uh, with this part. So a lot of flexibility, very soft, uh, and very practical also depending on your needs. Moving forward now with the uh, rigid 4K material right here. So the, the goal behind the rigid 4K is to create parts with minimal deflection. Uh, and that includes with thin walls. So like it, as you can see in uh, this part right here, it can provide really rigid parts uh, with thin walls. Our next material would be the uh, rigid 10K. However, we don't have the Rigid 10K on stock. It is a new material that's just been released uh, into our library and it now is accessible. Uh, however, I don't have printed parts, but to know a little bit about the Rigid K, uh, this is the by far the stiffest uh, material and it is a resin that simulates thermal plastics. It has a resistance of deformation under a variety of forces. So this rigid 10K, it is available now. So if you're looking for a resin that has a really strong and stiff properties, uh, the, uh, the rigid uh, 10K is highly recommended. Uh, we've been doing some tests also with molds. Uh, so for people that are looking at maybe some pre high pressure, uh, this might be a, uh, a material to, to consider in one of your projects. So looking forward to hearing from you and some of your input. Um, so just want to give a quick plug here of my email, uh, which is uh, jofarrell at solidexperts.com, which is right here below. So if you have more questions regarding our uh, standard resins, our engineering uh, resins, uh, and you want to uh, get a presentation by me personally, or just want more information or to see if it's if it's possible to do with your project, uh, that's what Solid Experts is here to do, is to work in conjunction with you to identify the needs and provide uh, as much information to you as possible to facilitate uh, the decision-making uh, process in, in your project. So uh, just wanted to give a quick plug there for my uh, email. Moving forward now we have the durable material right here. This material really uh, separates itself in terms of if you're looking for something with minimal friction like this gear right here, well the durable uh, resin is for you. It has a combination of strength but as well it, it's a great material if you're looking to, 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 to work over. There's a certain flexibility to it depending on the uh, layering that you do and how thick your parts are. Uh, but the durable material has a combination of strength but as well for minimal uh, friction. Finally, one of the things that I really love about the Form Labs Form 3 is our high temp material, which is uh, probably long overdue in terms of 3D printing. Uh, some of the challenges, especially with making molds, uh, is the heat tolerances. So with this one, uh, we have a heat tolerance of 236 uh, degrees Celsius uh, with this type of resin here. 
so you can get some great results and be able to produce uh, a lot of parts with your molds uh, depending on the environments of course. Before we summarize is uh, just kind of show a bit of the uh, the parts that we're able to create on the form labs. Uh, these are some of them but also we have a femur here uh, that was printed out. As you can see this is the support material. What differentiates the form labs uh, brand is in terms of its precision of parts but also the support material as well is much easier to remove and much easier to peel off with this type of technology of low force stereo lithography which we spoke about a bit earlier and finally we have a vacuum nozzle very very nice smooth surface finish very detailed to summarize the uh, the form labs uh, brand whether it's the form 3 or the form 3l if you're looking for a printer that can create really complex geometries. You need a smooth surface finish for an end, end, uh, end use product. If you need something with medical properties, medical capabilities that you can wear, that are wearable for long periods of time, uh, we have materials that also can go into the jewelry industry as well. So we're looking at high resolution parts, castable wax. This is a very versatile machine and we're able to have a multitude of applications with this printer. So if you're looking for something for prototyping, end use product, uh, whether it's just quick rapid prototyping, you're looking for quick fixes on the production floor, uh, you're looking for high temperature materials, whether it's for mold creations, whatever the case is, we have an array of material properties that can really fit your, your needs, your engineering needs, your uh, production needs, or just your end use product as well. If you're in the, if you're looking for something that's medical grade, uh, that's something that we can do as well. So. I mean, thank you for tuning in. And once again, if you want to have a presentation by us, uh, just feel free to reach out to me at my personal email below at joferrell at solidexperts.com. And thank you for assisting to this webinar here today. And uh, I'm gonna wish you all a great day. Thank you.